Dit is Wessel Simons van Bitcoin Magazine. We zitten hier met Jedi uh, Taylor van Decent.bet. Um, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jedi. Um, what, uh, what is your first impression of this day, the day of the crypto here in Amsterdam? Why? Uh, very impressed. So we've mm. been to another conference. This is our second conference in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was with in Ada, yes. um, which was a huge success. Great turnout. This one actually is uh, more people turned out for this one than true, even that true. conference. So yeah. um, very exciting. A lot of activity, a lot of energy and uh, very pleased so far. Yeah, yeah. You do an international roadshow, you told me. Uh, so you came from Asia and then you landed here in, in Amsterdam or what was yeah. the... So most recently from London okay, for okay. the ICO oh, yeah. London 2018 tour, same uh, kind of circuit as, as this one. Yeah, but yeah. prior to that, we were in Tokyo for about a month where we did a series of conferences and meetups and uh, cool. we spent a lot of time in Asia, Pacific and Europe as those are two of our larger markets just due to the interest in online gaming. Yeah, with on online gambling, uh, can, can you sh uh, show a picture, I mean, uh, uh, paint a picture uh, how big this market is actually worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2016, I haven't don't have the updated 2017 statistics yet, but mm. 2016 it was just over 45 billion dollars. 45 billion. Yes, okay. and then by 2024, so seven years, mm -hmm. six years uh, from now, it's expected to double to just under 100 billion. Okay. Um, one other interesting thing about the market is it is shifting online when you look at gaming as, in, as a whole. Uh -huh. uh, and by 2020, the majority of gaming gambling revenue will be online versus okay. physical casinos. Okay. So we're positioned well in that regard. So this is uh, like a it can be a dead stake for for Las Vegas in the end, maybe, or do you foresee the end of the physical casinos? Or? I don't think there'll ever be an end because no. there there's there's that experience of yeah. being inside the casino, but yeah. there's also the challenges with you know you have to get on a plane, you have to travel to Las Vegas. There's a lot of expenses. You have to get a hotel, so it's not easy for somebody mm. that doesn't live near Las Vegas to go and enjoy that sort of experience. So mm. why online gaming will be popular is because you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it can never, to be honest, it can never replace the experience of being inside the casino. Yeah, um, yeah. But the, as, as okay. long as the revenue is shifting in the right direction, then we're very bullish on the space. Okay. Maybe first personal, personal, um, what is your uh, background? Huh? I mean, uh, were you an online gambler or were you a developer? What's your sure. background? Um, so I was raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, Reno and Las Vegas. Oh, okay. um, so I've been in casinos from a very young age. Okay, okay. Um, my first experience with casinos was Blackjack was the game that intrigued me the most. And what yeah. I liked about it is I taught myself how to count cards. Okay. So one of the kind of old sayings is the house always wins. True, true. But when you can count cards, you can actually get the edge in your favor, where the percentages are actually, over time, you'll be the one that wins. Okay. So I was at a very young age, always trying to figure out how to beat the casino. Okay. From there, I moved into poker, Texas Hold'em. And the okay. thing that attracted me to that was, with poker, you decide when to put your money in the pot. True, true, so true. you can only put, I, I would only put my money in when I knew the odds were heavily in my favor. So again, uh -huh. trying to get that edge. You were a professional poker? I like played play? professional poker for a few months, never big tournaments or famous or anything like mm -hmm. that, but I didn't mm -hmm. support myself uh, okay. playing poker full time. Cool. Um, and then the final stage of my gambling experience was I created a, an online sports betting arbitrage system okay. where we would wager over $7 million a month cool. on sporting events and we would bet on both sides of the game. And with arbitrage, we were able to guarantee positive returns okay. uh, throughout that, which ultimately led me to Costa Rica where I worked directly with online sports books. So that okay. was my gambling side. Yeah. From there, I started working with a venture capitalist, a private equity firm out of New York, and okay. I built a couple technology companies into okay. multi-million dollars in revenue. What kind of technology? Uh... So a lot of it was, the first company was Caliber Technologies, which yeah. was re heavily focused on office technology, so print management, um, okay. automating a lot of the office um, I guess ordering and mm -hmm. uh, fulfillment of supplies, things like this. Okay. The secondary company was Broadlook Technologies, which was okay. focused on gathering lead data 
off of the mm-hmm. internet. So okay. it would go through and scrape web pages trying to develop leads for companies. Okay. But we worked directly with like Salesforce.com, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, which had a huge technological kind of influences uh, back into our business. So combining okay. that gambling and yeah. that technology uh, was we a good fit bet. into crypto to get into <laughs> decent bet. But I was the CEO of uh, Caliber Technologies at the age of 28. Okay. And then in broad look, I was the uh, director of sales, ultimately vice president of sales um, in that company. So I've held multiple C-level roles uh, okay. in technology companies. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Sounds good. And how did you enroll in this crypto crypto sphere, actually, crypto currency? I mean, did you were you a crypto trader or...? Uh, Started as a trader. Started as a trader, yeah. Yes. And then so with my background in venture capital and private equity, I was very familiar with Wall Street and IPOs, yeah. traditional yeah, IPOs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so through trading, I came across an ICO. Yeah. And I was like, what an interesting concept where you can actually reach out to the community and almost like this Kickstarter funding yeah. of a yeah. new business idea. So I figured gaming with technology would be something special, a uh, special type of company, and to have the ability to bring in the community to raise funds and build a very special platform was appealing uh, to me. Okay. But the business model is really around, yeah. we give 100% of the profits back to the community. Okay. So I actually watched a video by Andreas Antonopoulos, yeah, who's true. a very famous yeah, yeah, Bitcoin yeah. Uh, influencer, in March of uh, 2017. And what he went through was a worldwide economic crisis that was taking place yeah. at the time. So there was 20 national banks with zero or negative interest rates. Netherlands has zero interest true, rates. True, true, true. Uh, Japan as well, uh, zero interest rates. That's why it's so popular, right? I mean... Correct. Correct. To, 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 Alternative to forms of uh, how to make your money work for you and see yeah. returns. Yeah. Um, hmm. So he's Greek. Andreas Antonopoulos is Greek. Yeah. Yeah. And his parents were heavily impacted by the economic crisis because Greece was actually experiencing negative interest rates. True, so they true. were an older generation that had retired, and their whole plan of retirement kind of changed true. when you have this nest egg that's going to last you through the rest of your life, but that starts depreciating because because the government failed you, true, true, and true. now the, the the currency is actually losing value, you don't have the nest egg that you thought you had. True, true, true. What also yeah. happens when mm-hmm. the currencies collapse is unemployment rates go through the roof. Yeah. So there's yeah. two challenges there. There's where to store my wealth, because the negative interest rates don't allow me to store it in the traditional banking systems. Yeah. But with the unemployment rates, it's how do I also create wealth? I felt Bitcoin solved the problem on how to store wealth, yeah. but I feel like the gap in solving the worldwide economic crisis was we needed to create a way that the average person could earn wealth as well. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why I wanted to do the 100% give back program. Growing up in Las Vegas, I know how much casinos make. And yeah. I was like, if yeah. I could give that back to the Maybe. community and allow mm-hmm. them to create wealth, then that would be a way to impact uh, people's lives. Maybe you can explain yeah, this this philosophy in a very simple example. I mean, uh, of course, dec- maybe first explain decent bet. Uh, what does it? Yeah, I mean, it's a cryptocurrency, but maybe you can explain sure. the blockchain model. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's an online casino and sports book mm-hmm. built mm-hmm. on the blockchain. And what the blockchain provides that traditional gaming doesn't is transparency. If you were to go into a physical casino in Las Vegas, like we spoke about, and put money into a slot machine, you have no idea if you have a realistic chance of winning or not. Yeah, true. You could put 100 after 100 after 100 in and just lose, 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 lose. All of our odds will be publicly verifiable on the blockchain, creating this trust between Mm -hmm. casino and gambler that hasn't existed historically. Okay. They know that they have a fair chance of winning. So that's why... There's a fair chance of winning in your casino. Correct. And those odds are published on the blockchain and verifiable by anyone. What are the, what are the odds, actually? I mean, so there's a wide variety of games. Mm. Um, when it comes to the sports book, it's a 5% fee or house take. Okay. The slot machines will be somewhere around 4 to 6%, which is highly competitive. Okay. So you but, can bet on sport games uh, on your... Uh, 
Hey, you can bet uh, in Correct. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So there's cool, sports cool. betting, slot machines, and a lottery. Okay. And then throughout the roadmap, we'll bring in more of the traditional games, the craps, the roulette, the uh, right. blackjack. Nice. It will be a full-fledged casino with all your favorite casino games and sports betting events. So it's actually a way to make the casino experience more transparent. Exactly right. And uh -huh. to share it with the community. Hmm. When you look at Las Vegas, <laughs> Excuse me. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity that's been kind of exclusive to the globalist elites. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. cannot build a casino in Las Vegas without a lot of money. Yeah. And so for an extremely profitable industry and these huge barriers to entry, mm -hmm. it was almost impossible for the average person to ever have that opportunity to own a portion of a casino and earn money like a casino does. Yeah. So it was the transparency as well as the ability to give back okay. through the blockchain. And what is what does it mean? Uh, one hundred percent is uh, is on the, in, is, is is for the house. I mean, we're part of that house. Uh, what does it sure. in practical sense mean? If I'm a trader in decent bet, what do I get? So you can, if you were just a traditional trader, then you wouldn't partake in the profit sharing. Mm. If you want to partake in the profit sharing, then it's called our be the house model. Uh, where you'd okay. actually essentially it's somewhat like stake your coins over a three month period uh, so okay. every year we have four sessions that uh -huh. are three months each and a week before the session starts all the investors have the opportunity to say I want to participate in this program okay. if they do they send the tokens to Decent.bet in exchange for house shares okay. that how those house shares entitle them to a percentage of the profits whatever percent they contributed if they were five percent of the total contribution okay. they would receive five percent of the profits back and there there are a three months period they are frozen actually. correct and which decreases circulating supply yeah. adding value back to the investors yeah yeah, yeah. at this point uh, how many tokens are circulated uh, just um, few numbers yeah, so circulating supply is around 145 million. There is uh, around, there's 18 percent of founder shares that are locked up for an entire year. 18 percent. Yep. Yeah. Two percent are for marketing bounties and uh, technological bug bounties. Okay. And then 10 percent is there to fund the house okay. to make sure there's always enough bankroll for the casino to operate. Yeah, for your online casino itself. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, the, the the value of the token at this point was twenty five dollars cents. Huh? Twenty five USD, right around uh, twenty five hundred to three thousand sats. Yeah, and it listed in a very uh, a few exchanges like uh, Cryptopia, Del uh, Ether Delta, and Yobit. Cryptopia, uh, okay, okay. Ether Delta, and Yobit. Yes, and we have a few more exchanges coming online soon. Okay, what uh, Binance, for instance, or we're working through the mm. details of Binance. No timing yet or confirmation on that. Um, but one of the ones that we expect to be online very soon would be Hit BTC. Oh, Hit BTC. Yes. How does it actually work? Do you have to pay the exchanges, or how? I mean, as a, a company, do you have sure. to pay? I mean, yes, you what? do. So you pay a listing fee. Yeah. As well as you fill out an application. Okay. So you have to, first step is filling out the application and being approved to be okay. on the exchange. Okay. And then once you're approved, then you provide the listing fee. Then the exchange has to set up your wallet on their side and do their backend connectivity with the contracts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which takes a little bit of time. But as soon as that's finalized, then the coin is ultimately listed. It's just a one-time fee. It's not a, there are no other fees related with these exchanges? We haven't explored every exchange out there, no, but okay, quite okay. a few. Uh, from our experience, it's only this one-time upfront fee. Yeah, okay, we okay, haven't okay. heard of any ongoing or recurring fees up to this point. Okay. Uh, what are your next uh, milestones for 2018? I mean, if we look, I mean, it's quite a success also here in Holland yeah. to participate in the online casino. Uh, what are the next milestones? Sure, so we're currently in testnet. Our technology exists and is functioning today. It's being tested by the community. Once we are finished with the testnet testing, yeah. that, that's really to ensure scalability of the technology, then we actually publish to mainnet or production and okay. open the casino which is scheduled for Q1 of this year by the, the end mainnet. of March. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. And that's when we'll actually generate revenue, generate profits, and the profit sharing will take place.
space, okay. which we expect to have a very large impact into the coin value. Because we'll be one of a select few current cryptocurrency companies that actually generate revenue and profits. Most okay. of them have roadmaps that take years yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to actually have a business up and running. Yeah. Uh, we finished ICO in October, so in a very short period of time, we will have an online functioning business that generates profits. And uh, how does it how does it make how do you generate profit with this model? I mean, you have the circulating uh, tokens, of course. You have 18 percent of the tokens are uh, uh, with the with the founders. Yep. Uh, how do you make profit? Well, the, so the company makes profits through the gamblers. Yeah, obviously. of course, of course. Um, the founders, what we wanted to do is completely align our interests with the investors. Oh, okay. So we built a zero profit business model. So the only way that we make money is through increasing the value of the token. Okay. So we have to perform, we have to execute, or else we're not going to make money and end up on the good side of this yeah, thing. So yeah, yeah. if the investors don't do well, we don't do well. And okay. to show that we weren't that we weren't looking to do something that wasn't sustainable and stayed around for an extended period of time, we locked our tokens up for the first year, okay. showing that not only do we have to perform, but we have to perform consistently over a year's time frame okay. in order to see any sort of benefit from the company. That sounds good. Uh, oh. uh, what, what are the, the plans? Uh, how do you see this blockchain space develop in the coming years? I mean, uh, of course, um, you experience also probably the dot-com area uh, with the MySpaces and etc. Uh, in what phase of the blockchain space are we now, actually? I think early adopters still? Or? Very early adopters. I, I, I don't know the exact percentage. I've looked at it months ago, but it's somewhere two, three percent of the total population actually owns cryptocurrency. Yeah. And then you look yeah. at some of the equations of relating cryptocurrency to Forex, and I believe the numbers are if Bitcoin particularly took even one percent of the Forex market, okay. it'd be worth $100,000 of Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Currently yeah. valued around ten, twelve thousand dollars it's still has huge, uh, huge potential, um, even with that small one percent of market yeah. share from forex. You're very, uh, you're very trustful of the of the of the Bitcoin, confident of the Bitcoin will yes. grow in, in this year. Yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. It's, there's actual value that I, I see it add personally. We run mm. an international business, and I do yeah. uh, international transactions. If I was restricted to bank wires, then it would take 14 days for me to send money across the world. I'd get hit with 15 to 20 percent fees. With Bitcoin, I could send money in minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. for five dollars, send money clear across the world and make transactions that the traditional banking systems don't allow for. Okay. So when you look at the evolution of worldwide economy, we're becoming more and more borderless, where countries are interacting and exchanging goods and services across borders more frequently. Okay. So in order for that to happen and scale efficiently for that evolution to continue, there has to be some sort of way to, to be more efficient with the sending and receiving of the money. Okay. And I believe that is big. Okay. Okay. Last question. I mean, we all know that Donald Trump uh, was uh, active in uh, Atlantic City, but also his own casinos, of course. Uh, did he ever uh, seek contact uh, with you guys? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd okay. love to receive that phone call one day just to get a good laugh at the very least and, and hear what he had to say yeah, about it. Yeah. But um, U.S. has tight regulations when it yeah, comes yeah. to online gaming. So, US, uh, yeah. yeah, we're based offshore and uh, we'll continue to be based offshore actually potentially looking at moving our headquarters to Europe, even potentially here in the Netherlands uh, over okay. the short, short the near future. You're now based in Puerto Rico or? Panama. Oh, Panama. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Yes. Uh, because of tax reasons. Tax reasons, and it was just, uh, they're very accepting of Bitcoin. Yeah. And it was uh, kind of close enough to the states to yeah. where I could um, get offshore, have the tax benefits, which are extremely beneficial okay. in Panama. And okay. to have, we wanted a government that wasn't too big that mm -hmm. they wanted all the control over cryptocurrency, like some of the larger governments, United States, China, um, are 
beginning to, to tighten regulations. Well, what are your experience here in, the, in Holland? Is this a positive climate in, in, in Holland? Did you experience till so far? Yeah, I believe it's very positive. You know, going mm. back to a little bit of our conversation earlier with the zero interest rates in the uh, yeah. bank accounts, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that that naturally evokes uh, curiosity or people seeking out other means of investment. Yeah. And cryptocurrency has just been so bullish over the last year. I mean, you look back to around January 2017, we were at around a $20, million, $20 billion market cap. Yeah, unbelievable. Our high was eight, over $800 billion yeah, yeah, market cap, currently over $500 billion. Yeah. To see that sort of gain over the course of the last 12 months is incredible. And in a place where you have zero interest rates, naturally people are going to hear that, yeah, pay attention course. to it. And that's why I believe I'm very bullish on, on the Netherlands and their okay. adoption of cryptocurrency. We have 400,000 people uh, privately invested in, uh, in cryptocurrencies. Do you expect the same uh, bullish run in 2018? Last question. I don't know if it'll be as bullish. There's going to be, I, I believe, some complications that, that get in roads. the way. More regulations that are going to come into play, which the right regulations are a good thing. Yeah. If it prohibits the freedom that cryptocurrency provides and that the majority of us mm -hmm. cryptocurrency <laughs> believers uh, love is that yeah. freedom. Um, so as long as the regulations protect investors, that's the biggest need right yeah. now is protecting investors and making sure they're viable projects, Trustful. not just any you know project with a white paper and a roadmap that may or may not actually be a business one day. If they could control that to mm -hmm. make sure that people were protected but not get overly involved to where it was restrictive and there was red tape everywhere, then that would be ideal. But okay. I think the regulations are coming more and more regardless. Uh, and then as those regulations come in, it's going to be harder for exchanges to operate. So I think we're going to see an, a huge increase in decentralized exchanges. Okay. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how the regulations, the exchanges, all of that kind of evolves. And uh, hopefully more decentralization, um, not regulations that impose on our freedom but yeah. do protect investors uh, that would be ideal um, but okay. I think some of this evolution could slow it down a little bit um, okay. but uh, we saw such crazy gains in 2017 yeah if we could do that again in 2018 so uh, well, the whole world would have to watch out <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah of course are there any coins you're very enthusiastic about I mean Clearly my own. He sent of course, that. of course. Uh, I place? love Venchain. Venchain, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is a, I think a wonderful coin, yeah. wonderful use case. Um, actually, really love AppCoin, which is a new coin that's come okay. out um, that has real life utility. They have users in the traditional space that are App ready to coin? convert App over. Coin? Yeah, AppCoin. Okay. Um, and then the Singularity. Uh, which right. is a AI, artificial intelligence uh, coin I've been looking a lot lately that I, that I think is some potential and is fairly exciting. And how do you, last question, uh, how do you actually analyze these ICOs? I mean, a, a few a few or substantial are, are, you can quote, it's like a scam, but how do you analyze these, if, if ICO is, is, uh, is, has potential or not? Yeah, I, I, well, there's there's two parts. Is it a scam? And then how much potential does it have? Yeah. I don't believe in uncapped ICOs. Okay. The purpose of an ICO is to create operating capital for you to execute your business model. Yeah. This is not an infinite amount. No. Huh. This is a budget and should be a very specific number. Do you still exist, the, the, these uncapped uh, ICOs? They're becoming less and less common. Okay. But, I mean, in the middle of 2017, when ICOs were going crazy, we saw some companies raise over $200 million. Yeah, and they like, don't how, know what to do with it. How, would you, how do you ever need that, that much money? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I love to see capped ICOs. Yeah. I love to see um, when, when ICOs whitelist addresses and put per person caps in place oh, that allows caps. more people to participate rather than, you know, I don't like globalist elites or the rich getting richer and kind mm -hmm. of the, you know, the, the average staying average, those separation of classes, if you will, okay. by capping people on a per person basis, mm -hmm. you allow equal participation regardless of how financially wealthy you are. So that's okay. another great sign. You see it with WePower, very popular, but they had a personal cap of uh, 0.2 Ether. 
Yeah. Uh, but they got a lot of criticism because their pre-ICO sale was fully uh, fully sold, and then then you had so. You see a tr trend that lots of uh, pre-ICOs are, are, are very fancy. A million percent. And we didn't see that in the beginning of 2017. True. It was just uncapped ICOs. Now maybe somewhat of a moral loophole that's taking place is let's do this pre-sale, raise what we want to raise, then make this fair ICO that yeah. allows us to have the best of both worlds. So we have all this angel investment that has no caps associated with it. Then we have this uh, traditional ICO that has the caps in place and allows yeah. for participation. And maybe it's a happy medium because both people get to participate, true, average true, 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 and, true. and wealthy. Okay, um, okay. But it's, it's, it's interesting. The most important thing mm. I would say is I like to see technology that exists. Okay. It's not just theoretical. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. I like to see technology that's the ready cases. to go. Use, you, average person use cases, utility to the token, not just creating a token to create a token, yeah. Uh, yeah. as well as technology. When when the company invests or raises investment to build value prior to going to ICO and asking the public to participate, mm. then they have something real and tangible. And yeah. I feel it's yeah. a more a more fair exchange of value. Yeah. Because you're yeah. providing investment, but we've provided tech technology that has value yeah. back yeah. to you. Yeah. So now yeah. I feel like we really exchanged something rather than just an idea True. and you give us your money. Kind okay. of thing. So I'd love to see that. Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much for your time and, uh, and uh, your words and uh, all the good luck. Ah, thank so. you so much. My okay. pleasure. Appreciate yeah. you having yeah, me on. Okay. Yep. Good luck.